So today we are driving 2018 uh, Hyundai Ioniq uh, electric. Uh, that's this is the full electric. It's the 2018 model, right? So this is the second year uh, that they are available in Canada. Except last year nobody could find them anywhere. Right now they are finally in stock. And today uh, we are with uh, Ilham, who is with Western Hyundai on Lakeshore in Toronto. And they have a few uh, of each kind in stock uh, as well. So this is the, the pure electric um, Hyundai Ioniq with a approximately 28 kilowatt hour battery. Um, the the horsepower on this at 88 kilowatts, which would be equivalent of about uh, 120, roughly 124 horsepower. So the range estimate with the climate on, mind you, we we have the climate on only at uh, 17 degrees right now. And the, the car hasn't been preheated, that's why the, the uh, estimate is very conservative. And we are a little bit less than half the battery, it's showing uh, 54 kilometer, kilometers. So uh, the estimate would be on the full battery in the warmer months would be well over 200 kilometers, right? Range. Okay, perfect. So uh, we just drove the, the Ionic Hybrid in, in the UK, but this the, the controls are completely different between the uh the hybrid and the plug-in hybrid and the electric right mm, uh, drive mode settings uh they tell you they have echo uh, normal and sports obviously echo gives you the longest range right if we go back to the ev so echo driving uh this is just your score on, on how well you did basically right uh, energy consumption and everything else uh okay so let's just keep it on that main screen so we're good to go. So this car is a pure electric car. So as soon as I let off the accelerator, it has the, the creep mode. So it tries and imitate uh, an automatic transmission in that as soon as you let go of the, of the brake, it moves forward basically, right? Which some electrics have, some electrics don't. So the steering wheel is nice, is nice and toasty. So the full electric uh, base starts around 36,000. Uh, and then the limited, which is the top model, would be around 41 and change, right? So almost 42. Uh, the government subsidy, like with most full electrics, is full $14,000 from the government. Uh, when it comes to the its uh, plug-in hybrid uh, cousin, which is actually here in Canada, it's called Electric Plus, right? That's the name for the plug-in hybrid. Uh, and the plug-in hybrid is, starts at around 30 uh 32 31 and change and the top uh, limited would be around 36 or so right okay perfect and about the subsidy based on the battery size is only about eight thousand dollars um the the battery here of course is 28 where in the uh, plug-in hybrid it's only about 8.9 and just under nine uh, kilowatt hours and that's what the rebate is based on um so in terms of the, the horsepower the total system horsepower uh, the the plug-in hybrid is a little bit more powerful. So here the system power is about 120. The system total system horsepower with both electric and gasoline in the plug-in hybrid is around 160, roughly total. Yeah. So it's slightly more powerful. However, you probably won't feel it because the electric motor uh, feels much more torquey, and it is much more torquey than the, than the gasoline engine. So. I think in terms of the feeling and, and, and acceleration and everything else, they're very comparable to each other, right? Yeah. Basically, Hyundai is the only company in Canada that offers all three models. So you can go for a regular hybrid, plug-in hybrid and full electric. And then, so the regular hybrid, again, it doesn't make sense with the subsidies in Ontario. It's actually cheaper probably to buy a full electric or plug-in hybrid than going with a regular hybrid because regular hybrids don't have any subsidy from the Ontario government. So, but just out of curiosity, to, just to let people know, what is the base price on a on a regular hybrid? The, which one? Well, just regular uh, Ioniq hybrid. I think it's around close to 30. And uh, just under 30. So basically, it makes much more sense to get a plug-in hybrid or electric, uh, and get a full rebate, and then it's actually becoming cheaper than than the normal hybrid. So it really doesn't make. You probably sell many more of these than regular hybrids, yes. right? Yeah, makes sense. I was surprised that they actually even came out with a regular hybrid, but in those markets where subsidies don't exist, they probably are much more popular. So it kind of makes sense for those markets that don't have any government subsidies, which is unfortunately most of Canada. <laughs> Only uh, Ontario, Quebec and um, BC have, uh, have rebates. Of course, ours being the highest. OK, 
Okay, so right now we're in, we in echo mode, so we'll probably try and switch to the other modes to kind of have an idea. It's it's fairly peppy even in the um, even in the uh, echo mode. So how would we then? Uh, how do we toggle the the modes? This one here. Ah, I can see an instant difference. So now we are in uh, which mode are we in right now? So which one? So yeah, I see it from here. Yeah, yeah, right okay. Now you're in the sport mode, and now you're in sport mode. Oh, this is the sport mode now. The yeah, I could. And the normal. This is the normal, right? Uh, oh yeah, I can see that the reaction time in the acceler, uh, you know, with the acceleration pedal is uh, is quite instantaneous. So the mode is the mode is here, right? The drive mode, right here. Okay, so I'm just looking for the spot on the dash where it says which mode we're using. It, and even the color, okay, this is sport, right? Sport, yeah, so it, even the color of the uh, speedometer changes to show you that you're in a sport mode. Oh yeah, it feels completely different, yeah, very peppy. Now the region is the, the the power uh, how powerful the regeneration is is it is it standard or can you actually adjust how strong the region is it's standard right so it's 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 basically um, it's fairly strong it's definitely stronger than a normal uh, hybrid uh, based on what we you know experienced in, in London UK recently um, but it's not as strong as the i3 but it's still it's still you know, you can feel that it's rec uh, recuperating a lot of energy. So it feels uh, quite nice. So this is the sport mode. Average 49.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So yeah, obviously because it's cold and it's uh, using a lot of energy to, to heat the, the cabin and, and the battery. And the, the consumption is, is quite high. And I'm sure that's the, the issue with test-driven cars that tend to be driven pretty hard so it's gonna be hard to get a very um, economical result on, on, uh, on a test car so yeah we're gonna keep it in this more sport mode because this is the most impressive so that we feel the, the full power of the 120 horsepower which feels much more powerful than 120 obviously I would say that's probably yeah. equivalent it's equivalent to probably close to 200 uh, horsepower in a regular uh, gasoline in the car. It feels very peppy. And the reaction to uh, the accelerator uh, pedal is instantaneous. So we're, we're just uh, we're gonna uh, hit a small portion of the QEW just so we can see how it feels on the highway. Basically with all of these cars you get the standard LEDs all around pretty much, right? With both plug-in hybrid and a full yep. electric. Okay. okay, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about the differences between the various models. So there's three different models in each, basically, um, right? The base... Plug-in has a 2024. Well, plug just a two, okay. Two, yeah. uh, so the base and a limited, like, that's it, like and, then, and then electric, you have three two. different? Two. Two also, okay. just a base and limited. Okay. And the difference is probably the sunroof. Sun. In the limited, you get the a leather. sunroof, leather seats. Uh, navigation is standard in standard. both. All standard. All standard. Okay. And the LEDs all around yep. are also standard. Okay. Amazing. Now the the parking sensors. Yes. And you have them. And then the the, the security uh, features that the and safety the systems, right? Like the top yeah. of the leg. Right here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it feels very secure and stable on, on the highway, of course. We're going to get off the highway now. So in terms of the driver assistance systems, uh, can you get them on both models or do you have to go to the limited, limited. to get all the... You have to unlimited only. And then what you get is the... Uh, um, uh, lane departure. Lane departure. Uh, do you have blind spot as blind well? Spot. Blind spot. Blind spot right here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in terms of the cruise control, is it adaptive cruise normal control. adaptive cruise control? Yeah. So these are the three main security safety features, right? Straight. Yeah.
Yeah, so our consumption is already going down. So if we drive economically, uh, I'm sure you would be able to. Uh, this is one of the most efficient electric cars out there. So even though the battery is smaller than Nissan Leaf and, and uh, Volkswagen uh, e-Golf, uh, the range is actually comparable, if not uh, larger, because of how efficient the car is. And obviously, they all. Uh, are there any specific colors that are assigned to only the electrics, uh, no, or that's basically all standard. three models? They are all standard, standard colors. Okay. So, as we mentioned, is you're one of the very few dealers that actually has a selection of them in stock. However, if someone were to order it exactly as they want, what's the delay from the order to uh, delivery? March around so March. March, so it's not, it's not, of, it's not, not that bad. Yeah. Okay, so they're finally coming in at yeah. very at good numbers, right? Yeah. Basically, yeah. Because uh, I know last year the issue was that production was so low and they, they brought in so few that yeah. uh, it was very very long uh, waiting list. So the displays basically there are two digital displays in the car. So the third mode here, the drive mode. Now we're in echo and the uh, speedometer turns green from red and then the middle mode which is neutral it's just blue basically um, kind of feels neutral I guess it's a standard mode yeah now in, in the sport mode definitely it, it, it does feel very sporty it's quite impressive and the shift paddles here what is the the function manual uh, you, can, you can do manual uh, Shiftronic. Okay, Six all right. Speed. So we have to change a mode here, or we just press the pedal? Yeah. Regeneration zero. Level one, level two, level three. Level three regeneration. So it basically increases the level of regeneration. So now we're in level three. Let's see how different it feels. Can we let off? Oh yeah, it brakes harder for sure. Now it's very close to our BMW i3. Now that's amazing. So now if we put it in, if we put it in, uh, get ready selected, yeah. If we put it in drive mode sport, there we go. Now we're in sport and level three regeneration. This is that this will feel, you know, basically as close to our i3 as as we can get with the the, the highest power and the highest regeneration. So. You can do single pedal drive, so you can. It, it won't stop all the way. You still have to depress uh, the brake to actually fully stop, but it, it'll do most of the braking for you when you're in level three regeneration. So that's a good feature that the Chevy Bolt has and the uh, Mitsubishi Outlander also has. So nice and peppy, and then we let off the, the pedal. Yeah, the regeneration is definitely stronger. Yeah, very nice. They can do most of the driving with one pedal without touching your brakes, which is quite uh, convenient. Yeah, it feels very peppy in the sport mode. Yeah, it's quite amazing. Very impressed with this car. So we'll see how it shortly how it compares with the plug-in hybrid. Uh, the the electric motor in the plug-in hybrid is half of this horsepower. So it's only 60 horsepower. Where here it's 120. So obviously, when you're going to be in all electric mode, it will not feel anywhere as powerful as this so you basically would have to go to a hybrid mode uh, to achieve this kind of a sportiness so now we'll I guess we'll see how the rear view uh, camera is working should we back it into the same spot where we came uh, yeah no I would stop right yeah here. just right here yes yeah. yeah, so like we can just basically uh, plug in so there we go this is your rear view camera so you have the guide uh, guiding lines which turn with uh, with the steering wheel uh, and so on top of the camera you also have the sensors, right? You have the sensors front and back? The side. The side view. Okay, okay. So in the, in the back only, not in the front, no. right? Okay, gotcha. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Wonderful. So you, we have uh, heated uh, front seats. The heated back seats are an option, right? And it's only on the limited, right? Okay, gotcha. Okay, fair enough. Wonderful. Thanks. Now let's see how it compares with the plug-in hybrid. Park, we're good. Okay.